meeting, those of us, those of you that are online with us, um, we had an executive session that ran a little bit long, so uh, we decided to start at 7.30 instead of 7. Um, so I'm going to call to order our Greater Albany Public School Board of Directors meeting on Monday, May 17th at 7.32 p.m. If you'll all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. And uh, we are going to go right into our comments from the public. Um, as a reminder, we have still been accepting our public comments uh, up until noon on the day of our meetings. And we, as we get them, um, log them and read them in the order that they arrive to us. And so I'm going to go ahead and read the public comments this evening. And um, we have three minutes for each public comment to be read and you'll let me know yes yeah, if I go over okay perfect public comment number one is from Jane Farrell this recent ongoing story belongs to all of Oregon I live in Eugene and attended the rally in Albany last Friday a well attended and passionate event in the call to action I write it is my strong belief that this investigation of a hate crime involving youth in Albany needs diligent public exposure for these kid vigilantes and their parents to feel consequences and receive fair justice under law as well rehabilitation. I believe school districts, especially the district I assume these children involved in the crime attend, need to galvanize with institutional responsibilities. Nehemiah wasn't killed, thank God, but badly injured and emotionally scarred. Many crimes like this involving children are reported across the country. <clears throat> Today alone, I see crimes reported in New York, California, Virginia, all involving 13-year-old children. I pose these questions as a voice from the teaching trenches. As an early education special educator, these kids could have been on my caseload only 10 years ago. As much as we think we know the answers to these questions, they remain unaddressed. How are hateful children bred and how are our educational systems complicit at the very least by passive inaction or ineffectual actions? Do you have a diversity, equity and inclusion working group? I couldn't find anything listed on your website. The question for them and for your school board and district level administration is how do we respond to this local is incident as a wake up call to address the urgent need for local system educational responses. Are these current events being discussed in COE slash UO leadership training classroom settings? Are early childhood educators addressing anti-bias curriculums? Are there discussions exploring racist intervention at the earliest years? Are there models of embedded anti-racist curriculum in schools to emulate or create? So many questions. As a district, I urge you to respond your local, respond your own local current events as teaching moments. We will certainly be considering the same here in Eugene. I needn't remind us violent teenagers will soon become violent adults. From the article, this incident, started over hate speech and escalated when the victim stood up against that speech. Racism and hate is learned and not inherent in our DNA. We need to have honest community discussions around combating hate and their related crimes in all forms. We need to embrace acceptance and to prevent acts of racism in our society. Um, that was quoted from the NBC16.com news article. Okay. Public comment number two, Crystal Morvey. Members of the board, it has recently been brought to my attention that the school board is considering options for next year's school calendar. Hidden within those different calendar options are changes to the high school master schedule. It seems top administrators decided abruptly during a work session on April 14th that our high schools would remain on the COVID schedule they were on last year, this year, excuse me, and not return to any full year classes next year. 
<clears throat> I am writing to express my extreme dissatisfaction with this decision and to appeal to the board to spend more time considering the negative impact this will have on the performing arts students and those that participate in AP courses. When I voted yes to the bond that raised my property taxes, it was because I believe that performing arts is important and that our children, district's children were missing out by not having a real venue to perform in, using cafeterias and gymnasiums for band and choir concerts. Now that the building seems almost done and the kids have been patiently waiting for years to have a real performing arts center, it seems like a silly waste of time and money not to allow its use. Cutting year-long music programs will be devastating to an already suffering and damaged program that depend on, depends on opportunities like competitions, concerts, pet band, and ensemble participation for student achievement and evaluation. Students will only get to experience part of the year while the other districts will get the benefit of a normal year-long schedule. This is not the way to keep students engaged in school. Students in AP classes will be at a huge disadvantage and other kids in the state if they have to take courses in a condensed nine-week period and be expected to perform as well as other students when they take their exams. This boils down to a hasty decision made by the GAPS district leadership without considering how it will hurt our students. How can we be considering year-round school to reduce learning loss caused by long <clears throat> breaks, but at the same time change a master schedule for our high schoolers that literally inserts nine-week breaks in every curriculum offered and expect our kids to have a competitive ch chance at college? The answer is that we cannot, and this schedule change needs to be discussed more, preferably in a public board meeting so parents have a chance to speak their mind about what the district is proposing. I urge the board to reconsider this hasty change and consider the impact on the few programs that the high schools still have on our, <clears throat> have on our students. My glasses keep fogging up, I'm sorry. <laughs> Every time I talk, I feel like I put like with my mask. Okay. <clears throat> Public comment number three from Samantha Shelley. During the last board meeting, there was an encouraging show of support for Superintendent Goff and the equity, diversity, and inclusion EDI work GAPS is doing. Many in the community understand that seeing APD officers in uniform on campus during the first week of school was a trigger that induced a range of reactions. While some families experienced joy and excitement, others felt surprise, fear, or uncertainty. This negatively altered the first day of school for some families after an already trying year. I appreciate that our district leadership listened to those voices and took immediate action to try to prevent the issue from becoming worse for those affected. I also appreciate that the district leadership is working to remove, to move forward in a more mindful way to present, prevent such incidences in the future. I was saddened to hear at the backlash from some members of the community and horrified by the hate crimes that followed in the wake of the first week of school. Our children deserve better. These issues became more become more visible when tensions are high, but they remain present even during calm periods. We need to teach our students the importance of listening to all voices. Teaching our students about equity, diversity, and inclusion helps them build tools that they will need to succeed in this world and collaborate with others. It aligns with state standards as well as GAP's mission statement. Such tools help to create better workers and better citizens. During her time as superintendent, Melissa Goff has been incredibly transparent. She has consistently held family forums and created committees to receive community feedback and ensure all voices are heard. She has sent out regular updates and other communications. She has allocated district funds to the schools with the highest needs of repair and improvement so students have access to the same basic facilities as other students in the same age throughout the district. I support our district leadership and the work they are doing. I appreciate the creation of the EDI director position as it shows a commitment to the continuation of this vital work. I was excited to see the big summer plan and its equitable approach of making activities free and providing transportation. Throughout this past year, there have been many times that I have reflected on the burden of leadership, on the burden our leadership has carried during these already difficult times. I am grateful that our district has such a strong leadership team. To our board, Assistant Superintendent Harlan and Superintendent Goff, thank you. Public comment number four is from Bridget Truax. <clears throat> Greater Albany Public School Board members, I'm writing this letter as a community member, a parent of a fourth grader at Liberty Elementary, and an employee as I am a, an SEA at Memorial Middle School. 
Before taking my position at Memorial, I worked at Sunrise Elementary for five years. I absolutely loved serving the students at Sunrise and saw firsthand what a difference it was compared to Liberty Elementary where my son attends. The priority of these differences had to do with the lack of funds from PTC and or the lack of a PTC at Sunrise. Sunrise Elementary, as you know, is a Title I school and serves a diverse population of students and some of our most high risk and students in need. Many of our Sunrise families struggle to just make ends meet each and every month, working relentless hours just to take care of their families, let alone meet every month, plan and execute fundraisers for Sunrise School. Well, over the past five years, I've been at the PTC at Liberty School, cover great costs for their teachers and students. For example, field trips, art teacher salaries, coding teacher salary, teacher supplies, t-shirts for leadership, school Costco membership, Amazon gift cards for teachers, an iPad for PE, an active mileage club running each and every year, playground equipment and paint, music class multiple days a week, and a school choir talent shows, a new laminator for the school, and I'm certain the list could go on. Field trips are so imperative for our students. It provides them with a gateway of knowing there is more out there in the world than what they experience in their everyday lives. This is an opportunity that Sunrise students have not had in several years. Many of the kids I work with there do not experience things outside of their own neighborhood. Many of them have never been to the coast, our local library, nor Corvallis, for example. I am in full support of our superintendent, Melissa Goff, utilizing funds to all the schools in need that do not receive funds from a PTC. In building bridges together, we must include all children, not just the selected students in a more supported and funded school. My son and I moved to the southeast part of town in March of 2019. He should go to Sunrise School, yet I have him going to Liberty on transfer because of the extra amenities that are offered there compared to Sunrise. This choice will make an in interesting transition for him when it's time to attend middle school, but I believe him having the opportunity to sing in a choir, learn coding, run in a mileage club weekly, and previously attend art schools, art class at his school outweighs those challenges up ahead. My mind is blown on how the schools most in need continue to get less support when it actually they need the most support. Three. That's three minutes. Okay. I have one little sentence. I'm going to go ahead. Honestly, it's a form of gentrification at its finest, and it's time to show support for Melissa Goff in supporting all of our schools, hence all of our students at the same level of funds. Public comment number five from Jill Nelson. I would like to express gratitude for the leadership of our district outlining a mission for our schools that is purposeful about educating children to become active, engaged, and valuable citizens and to represent all voices. I have seen my kids' teachers implement the curriculum and guide my children in a way that partners with how we invest in them at home. Greater compassion alongside academic development has been one of the greatest benefits. They have benefited from a diverse learning environment and are able to apply their understandings of history and the present in a way that increases their passion for seeing the needs in their community and wanting to help improve it. My children, who represent Albany's majority culture, have only benefited from our district's emphasis on equity, diversity, and inclusion. I have so much hope for our community's future as I look at the current direction of our district and what is it, it is empowering our students to become. Thank you to the board and administrators for your work in this. I hope this will continue in the future. And public comment number six, which is our last comment, is Heather Carmichael. I am a resident of Albany, Oregon, and I have two children who attend Greater Albany Public Schools. I am concerned with the negativity from the community surrounding our district's efforts to promote equity, diversity, and inclusion. Being a biracial family in this district has sometimes been challenging. Our experience has been a lack of representation for our children in their current curriculum or the staff. There recently has been an uptick in bullying based on a student's race, and this makes me very concerned for my children's safety. Thank you, GAP School Board, for making the decision to pursue being a culturally aware district, even under pressure from the community to not do this. These efforts will make our children safer and will make all Albany students better citizens of our city. Okay. Thank you to everyone who submitted public comments. And 
that will move us into our board business. Um, and first on our list is any action items uh, resulting from our executive session. Um, so to the board members, we all attended an executive session and we heard confidential information result relating to a complaint. Um, I will now hear entertain a motion if um, there is one for how to uh, further handle this complaint. Madam Chair. Yes, Director Roach. Madam Chair, I move that the board delegate the authority to the board chair to draft a letter to the complainants and respondent regarding the outcome of the complaint. Okay, there is a motion on the table to delegate the authority to the board chair to draft a letter to the complainants and respondent regarding the outcome of this complaint. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. You're good. It's okay. Uh, all those opposed? Okay. That passes with unanimous consent. So as your board chair, I accept that delegation of authority and I will take uh, on the action of writing up the appropriate letters. Um, I do believe that based on that result, uh, we will need to schedule uh, a follow-up executive session within the next 10 days. Um, so Chris will be in contact with some date options. So if you can send something out, um, I would push it out closer to that 10 day time frame as much as possible, but maybe around seven ish. It gives us time to respond after. Okay. Thank you. And then the school board um, meeting calendar is next on our agenda. And I see this is me showing. So, Mr. Budsner, yes, go I, ahead. May I ask a question on the yes. previous action item? I just want to, to um, clarify that um, that the um, action that the board just voted on is not in relationship to any staff member, that the complaint was not in relation to a staff member. Correct. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. School board calendar meetings, um, you guys have in front of you our draft of a 2021-2022 school board meetings. Um, again, this is the same as it's been with our Monday uh, meetings every two weeks with a few exceptions due to holidays. Um, typically because we're so close to um, having some new board members come in, we go ahead and approve a standard of schedules and then allow um, the new board members that are coming in to negotiate that. It can be adjusted if, if need be by the new board um, coming in. So does anybody have any issues with the calendar and dates that are there? Okay. Um, yes, please. I move to approve the 2021-22 school board meeting calendar as presented. So we have a motion to approve the 2021-2022 school board <laughs> meeting calendar as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, that passes with <clears throat> unanimous consent as well. And that moves us into our superintendent report. Thank you, Chair Butzner and board members. I'd like to share with you tonight just a few pieces um, of updated information. We'll jump right in with the start of hiring. We have recently announced Heather Huzefka <coughs> as our new Executive Director of Human Resources. She will be replacing Randy Larry, who retires at the end of June. So we are thankful that Heather has agreed to overlap a bit with um, Executive Director Larry, and so they're working together right now and um, we are super appreciative to uh, Mr. Larry for agreeing to spend that time with Heather as well. And we are pleased to announce that we have now hired Ashley Netzel into the new role, a new role for her that is, of Director, Director of Business and Finance. We uh, today conducted our finalist interviews. 
for our Executive Director of Equity and Inclusion and uh, are hoping to um, be able to make that offer before the beginning of next week. And we hired for Think Big this summer um, uh, Sylvia Sorensen as the director and Patrick Kennedy as the assistant director. They're both full-time employees right now in other roles, so they are spending um, time in addition to those roles to prep for this work until summer begins. Um, think big for summer. We continue to see advanced coursework op offerings at LBCC in Oregon State. Remediation opportunities happening both through the school's offering and through the partner offerings as well, coupled with um, really high engagement, high rigor offerings to our families. We have a band camp that we are able to um, help support, which is put on by our high school band teachers. And uh, then we have also been able to partner with both the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club of Albany to do significant programming offset, uh, offset of costs for them. Water awareness is happening. Pre-K programming is happening. We have district summer programs. Our lights keep going off. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, we also have City of Albany partnering in things such as library. We, uh, I would like to give a shout out to student director Herrera Moore and student director Carmichael for facilitating our student forums last week. They did a phenomenal job. And um, for those students who participated, they were able to get some voices into the room, which was fantastic to hear. We also had family forums last week and our budget committee chair, Chris Norman, presented at both the forum in English and the forum in Spanish to uh, share information about the budget, but also to solicit input from our families. And what was lovely is that he was able to bring those into the budget committee meeting at the end of last week. And um, let's see, two more things. We had the Chamber of Commerce uh, invited us to present to their Governmental Affairs Council and to the Chamber in general last week. Thank you, Vice Chair Thompson, for taking on yes. that role. Appreciate that very much. Um, it worked out particularly well since uh, the night before. My husband uh, injured his back pretty severely, and so I've spent the last four days with, with my husband, uh, who has been incapacitated. So thank you. I would not have been able, I would have had to have canceled on them at the last minute. So thank goodness you were already um, doing that. Yeah. Um, and finally, we are in the middle of our policy rewrite. We are nearing the end of section J. So board members, you have in your packet tonight, the first half of J. Don't get overwhelmed. You're not approving it. It's just um, for you to know ahead of time what your homework is to be reading and you will get the second half of Jay when we finish that as well. And that is all that I have for you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Board members, nope. Okay. So we are moving into our financial report and we've got our regular monthly financial report. Is Jim joining us or? Yep. Huh? On the big yep. screen. Oh. Just Jim. There we go. There you are. I was hoping that you would get your new finance director. Uh, uh, yes, here I am. No, we've got you. It's delayed because the recording is delayed by 30 seconds. Okay, I'm hearing myself about five seconds later. <laughs> can you hear us, Jim? <laughs> yes, I can. Okay. Just talk right through it. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to help the feedback. Thompson, if you mute, mute your mic, we think oh. we'll try again. Yeah, anyway, 
you have a, a new end of the month report, and last time, if you look at that report, it essentially is unchanged. There's a very small difference between what this report says and last month's. Uh, you may recall that we said that we got a report from the state on the state school fund that we didn't believe. And it turned out that we were mostly right. Uh, and that report's been changed. But it does look like we may get a little bit extra funds from the state school fund because our student count, our weighted student count, was slightly higher in 2019-20. In but otherwise, the, the report uh, on the current year is, is essentially the same as last time. So, we have muted ourselves on our end so that you're not hearing the feedback.
<laughs> Magical. There any questions? I'd be glad to address them. Any questions from board members? No. It does not sound like we have any questions for you, Jim. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you for the update. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. I got to thinking it might be our mics that were he was hearing because it was, was so perfect. loud. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> I think it might have been. Unless somebody in the back is doing some magic back there. No, he's like, no, <laughs> it wasn't no, me. Magic, no magic <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, all right, so that's it for our financials. Uh, we're going to board reports and Bunch. oh yes, Do go we ahead. Need to make a motion um, on the oh financial report. I apologize. Yes, we do. I, I had moved on to the budget part okay. when he was doing the budget part. So yes, okay. thank you. Can I make a motion uh, to approve financial report as presented? Thank you. We have a motion on the table to approve the financial report as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. That approves unanimously. Uh, on to our board reports. Um, we still have our list of school board roles uh, committees and liaison ship. Uh, has anybody had any of those meetings that they would like to share anything for? Well, the superintendent kind of took my uh, <laughs> the policy <laughs> rewrite, the policy rewrite, and I basically presented the uh, good news as um, Director Scherzinger just talked about to the um, the Chamber of Commerce. It was just a recap of what's going on and. Um, Think big summer and uh, the positive uh, items out of the budget. Um, I think there's only two things. Oh, and bargaining continues. Um, continues. Um, that's that's going well. It's just um, it's going to take some time. <laughs> that's all. It's going to take time. That's it. All right, any other board member reports? I'll give a shout out to our partners oh. at the Albany Schools Foundation. Oh. <laughs> Such a fun spring gala. Um, just, I'm really impressed. It, it was not in, in person. It was um, all done virtually, but it was just really creative and really fun. And um, I, because it wasn't in person, it was easier for me to like engage my whole family. And so we really had a fun time with the, the boxes of, of food that got delivered to our house and going through the silent auction and, and bidding on things and just really enjoyed it. I don't know what, what the total was, but I, I hope it was a successful evening for them and just appreciate all that the foundation does in support of our, of our schools and um, certainly the, the gala is the big kickoff, a big fundraiser for the money that will go directly to our students. Yeah, I, I just want to echo the, mm -hmm. what a great job Albany, Albany Public Schools Foundation for a fun event. And thank you so much for what you do for our kids. Excellent. How about student board reports? I rock, go. paper, scissors. Oh, they didn't even rock, paper, scissors. Go for it. <laughs> cool. Am I good? Like, yeah. uh, yep, you're okay. good. So uh, school is going very well back in person. We had some quarantines right off the bat, which was a little disappointing to some students. And there was some controversy in uh, classrooms and whatnot. But with the uh, student forums that uh, uh, Superintendent Goff had me and Esperanza facilitate, we were able to get answers to students. And I was able to get uh, the information to go back to my students so that even the students that weren't able to make it to the forum were getting answers. So that was super good. And all, most of the things students are struggling with is just like uh, the quarantines and everything, the COVID restrictions, but there's no real like school uh, problems. And at West, we were able to hold some vaccine clinics uh, which is super awesome, some free ones that we were able to offer to students and families in the community. So that was super awesome. We are currently on day one of a spirit week. It's the first spirit week that we've tried doing back in school. We have uh, dress-up days, uh, things called pop-in games or pop-up games, like small games we're doing here and there, uh, COVID-safe, 
uh, figuring out how to just make the most of what we can with that. And we're doing prizes for like best dressed and stuff. So not your average spirit week, but we're doing the best that we can. Uh, drama is still going on with their production of Charlie Brown winter sports. I know it's weird to say because it's May, but winter sports <laughs> did start this week. So that's super awesome. Things like basketball and swimming, uh, band. We have been able to figure out some creative ways to do maybe a concert at the end of the year or something like that. So that is super encouraging. And with that, we also participated in the Oregon state solo and, uh, What's the word? Solo and Ensemble Festival. I always forget the second part. But we actually had two students from uh, West Albany and South Albany. I'll let Esperanza introduce the South Albany student during her report. But our student was Caroline Gal. She plays the flute, and she is only a sophomore. And she was the only student from West Albany to reach the superior rating in her division. So that's a super cool accomplishment as a sophomore. And with that, I believe we're going to pull up the clip of her solo right now. <coughs> Or a little bit of it. Paused. Probably has to buffer. I wonder if that's what's happening. <laughs> oh, don't touch. Do you that want was to a, it was a spot on <laughs> intro. It was. It was, it was perfect. Was great. Let's try it.
<laughs> awesome. Yeah. So congratulations to Caroline and all the other uh, student participators in the state ensemble. And I will finish it off by, I know the uh, CDC came out with some new guidelines uh, with masks and things, but I would just ask as a senior to the public that we still are cautious and we're still, uh, COVID is most certainly not over. And as a senior who wants to do things like have an in-person graduation, I would just ask that we're still cautious and still uh, not acting like it's over. So thank you. Thank you. Great report and great job, Carolyn. That was amazing um, for sure. So thank you for sharing. And Esperanza, you're up. All right, I have a lot to get through, so <laughs> let's do it. Uh, senior awards are now happening. We are holding mini award ceremonies. It's being held in front of South by the office. Uh, students come by to take pictures and videos while they receive their awards. Uh, we think it's a creative way to allow families to be involved because they can just pull up in their cars and see their kid. Um, Personally, then on Zoom calls, and I know uh, we will all be excited to see the entire video complied, compiled <laughs> that will um, look as though it was one live ceremony because everyone's going to take a video as they're going through, and it'll be great to see just all the seniors receive their awards. Uh, the second ses session is on Wednesday. Um, Mr. Hunter said if you have time to come by and see the stage that was set up, it would be really cool. Um, all the awards are based on different things like community and college scholarships along with building awards for the seniors. And a big thank you to Jessica, Caitlin, and all the presenting staff for doing these ceremonies. We really do appreciate it. And I know your seniors are very thankful. Um, I'll leave the music thing for the last, for the video. Um, leadership, uh, we held ASB elections and are now holding class elections in person, which is just a great thing. I think everyone's loving being together. Um, we are now, we are holding our spirit week next week. <laughs> With dress up days and all that type of stuff. Um, it should be fun to see um, all the students dressed up. We're also um, going to be holding a virtual assembly on the Friday of that week, which should be interesting. And we will try our best to make it uh, as cool as it can be. Um, teacher appreciation was last week. And I know for me, at least, it was amazing to see on social media, just everyone thanking their teachers to have the break from constant um, negativity and just see everyone being thankful for their um, teachers has been really nice. I know I got to say thank you to some of mine, which was just great. I know they're, they really appreciate it, especially through everything that has been going on. And leadership has been able to put together a downtown dinner for the seniors. It is a formal event, so hopefully they, um, the seniors can get a use out of those dresses or <laughs> seats that they bought their junior year. Uh, Wes is also holding one just, um, I think, a week after ours. <coughs> um, and something really cool else that's going on is a lot of programs are being set to have um, summer sessions, like a lot of our bands. Um, My Speech and Debate is having a camp thing, which I think is very interesting, and I'm very excited, actually. It's something to look forward to. Um, and the Think Big program, I know a lot of students have actually been um, – it's nice to know that you just have something to look forward to after school ends, um, especially just because we haven't been able to see each other and just to have that moment to be together. Um, I have two student comments. Um, these are the two only ones I got. It was repeated a couple of times, so <laughs> that's the only reason I put them in. Uh, I don't think you guys can answer the first one, but I promise I'd say it. Um, how is school going to look next year? Everyone's worried about the schedule and whether or not masks will be involved, especially for those who are vaccinated. It's just a bunch of worry. Uh, I told them that we probably won't have that answer just because we didn't have the answer for most of this year. <laughs> You're going to have to give it some time. <laughs> and the second thing is, um, so we weren't able to do any type of fundraising. So events next year have no money and no thing to do, kind of work with. So will we even have the funds to hold events? And will the district help if we don't? It's kind of that 
program like um as far as i know there's no money for like prom next year or even sadie's dance because that's usually what funds prom so it's just kind of a what if type moment um but that's another thing of we'll figure it out once we get to it type of situation <laughs> i was kind of guessing but yeah um uh, Last thing is the OSAA State Solo and Chamber Music Contest. Um, first off, our Ascend was one of the four groups to score the highest in this year's ensemble contest, receiving an outstanding rating from the judges. This is the first A South Albany High School ensemble has placed at state. Yet again, this is Hunter's um, knowledge. So if it's wrong, you get to blame him, not me. <laughs> And Abigail DeYoung was one of only two sopranos to receive a superior rating from the judges. No South Albany High School has ever ranked higher at state. Um, so it's just kind of a moment to be proud. And Andrew is going to show us the video. you can see Great. both these girls have very healthy lungs and um, <laughs> yeah uh, we I know they both did amazing and that's the end of my report thank you I know that uh, Abigail had many options for school it sounded like but she is going to and I and I don't know the name of their music school but she's going to John Hopkins oh. um, school of music so yeah so that's a great accomplishment for her, for sure. Yeah. So congratulations, Abigail. 
Um, I also understand we had a couple of outstanding ratings that I just wanted to mention, both from West Albany High School. Is it Cadence Sugar? Sugar. Sugar? Yep. Um, is it Mallets? Was the yeah. instrument? He played the marimba. So it's like a, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's like a wooden xylophone. Okay. Big. Great. Yeah. And is it Sashi Wrigley? Yeah, Sachi. Sachi Wrigley. Wrigley. Yeah. Um, also on the bass violin from West Sony. Both received outstanding ratings as well. So congratulations to both of them. So um, more information on the GAPS student success at the OSAA State uh, School Solo and uh, Oregon Music Education Association um, State Chamber Ensemble Festivals will be shared later on in the week, it sounds like, correct? Yeah, online. So great job, everyone, on those. Okay, uh, that brings us to our consent agenda. We had our personnel. Did anyone have any questions about the personnel report or list? Okay. Uh, we also have our minutes from the last meeting. Were there any questions, comments, edits for the minutes? The very yes. Minute school one. Nope. Go ahead. I, when I um, thanked, uh, went to OAS, um, and it was um, Principal Hannon that we saw, and not Principal Hunter. Um, just a small little change ah, there that I noticed, but uh, everything else looked good. I see Chris nodding. She's got that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so for the consent agenda, that will pass um, unanimously. Okay. On to old business. We have our transportation facility, and I see that Director Buttram has joined us. So we will let you take it. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, this is the transportation facility uh, brought to you back or brought back to you under old business. Uh, we discussed this in some detail at our last board meeting, and I had no questions since then. Um, so, barring questions now, I think I would hand that back to you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, were there any questions or comments from board members before we move forward with the motion? Okay. So, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. Okay, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the full faith and credit obligation resolution for $10.7 million as presented by staff. So we have a motion on the table to approve the full faith and credit obligation resolution for $10.7 million as presented by staff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes unanimously. I think that moves us on to the transportation facility project management. Yes, Madam Chair, similar to last time, this is uh, brought back to the board under old business. Um, we discussed it in detail and uh, barring additional questions, I believe it's ready for action. Okay, thank you. Any questions on this one? This was a fee amendment for HMK. Okay, we'll entertain a motion on this one as well. I uh, move to approve the HMK fee amendment not to exceed 299,500 as presented by staff. There's a motion on the table to approve the HMK fee amendment not to exceed $299,500 as presented by staff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, passes unanimously as well. All right. We are on to, we had no reports, correct, for tonight. So we're on to bond business and report, monthly bond report. Is David joining us on? Yep. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Great. I'm not in the way, am I? It's my big head. I can move. <laughs> <laughs> big head. <laughs> it's usually in the way. <laughs> David, can you hear us? We can't hear you. Sir, now we can. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. And if you're hearing if you're hearing feedback, let us know. Okay. I'm not hearing any feedback at this time. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, here to uh, give you an update on the April uh, report of progress on the bond. And April was the month, which was really the highlight was the ribbon cuttings. 
for South Albany and West Albany High School. It's hard to believe that uh, uh, five years of work, at least on my part, uh, is beginning to come to an end. And uh, it was exciting. It was exciting to be able to turn those two facilities over to the schools to do it officially, uh, to be able to invite the public in. Uh, I was uh, unfortunately not able to attend the South Albany one, but I was at the West Albany. And uh, just to see people come in, be able to experience the facility uh, was very fulfilling for me. And uh, two great facilities uh, for the district. Uh, so to me, that was just that was just a highlight of uh, a lot of hard work for a lot of years. Uh, West Albany High School, we are continuing to complete punch lists, um, and uh, that work is ongoing. We're working around students and staff. Uh, the contractors uh, are in our coordinating that through Susie and her team, making sure that we're not impacting uh, the contractors, uh, and, and that work is, is continuing to proceed. We're also working on uh, the mechanical system and the pre-commissioning uh, items that need to occur before the district's commissioning agent can begin to do the checkout and determine whether or not the system's functionally performing. A uh, number of uh, items that we're tracking on, I unfortunately don't have a date when I think they will be able to turn uh, basically turn the building over to us to start that commissioning. Uh, it is something that is uh, uh, we are focused on and spending considerable time uh, just working with the contractor and the subcontractors to make sure that they complete the work and, uh, and we can turn the system over. Uh, 2021 CFU projects are on target for starting uh, when school is out. Uh, one note that uh, I want to make sure that you uh, are aware of is, is that the uh, mechanical project is on hold at Sunrise. So the 2021 Sunrise mechanical project is on hold. All other projects are proceeding. So the, the projects at Sunrise that are proceeding are the fire alarm uh, upgrade and then the flooring uh, work where we're putting in a, a new uh, all-purpose athletic, very durable floor in that cafetorium space. Uh, that is uh, my update for the month of April. Uh, do you have any questions from the bond report, the end of month report that uh, we submitted that I could answer? Uh, looks like Director Ward has a question. Just a quick one. Hi, David. Um, Hi. So how, so I see that for the flooring projects, which, which are a CFU that we've been able to start construction on that already, even though the kids are still in school, how are we swinging that? Um, we're, we're just doing our pre-project work. We, I don't believe we've started any of the 2021 summer CFU projects. The work we're doing is the pre-planning work, the coordination, per, uh, permitting all of that work uh, prior to, that, that just prepares the contractors so when they mobilize, they're ready to start immediately. So I, I, I'm sorry if I... Uh, um, I'm sorry, I just page to, to, to believe something else. Oh, okay, page 21 says construction is at 40%. Tw um, tw which report is that, please? Um, your report? Yes. Page 21 of 56. So, you mm -hmm. say that, which page again? It looks like, is that the critical facility upgrade, the flooring? Project, Jen? Yeah. It looks like the flooring project at Liberty Sunrise and Waverly says construction. On page 21 says construction is at 40%. Okay. Um, so which is page one of two for that particular. Yeah. I've got that. I, I need uh, to check with that project manager. I, I 
have a feeling that that is a typo on our part. Oh. But let me check, and I'll get an email to Russ Butcher, and then looking forward to you to answer that question tomorrow. Sure. I'm sorry, I, I can't give you. No, no, no. I was just uh, curious as well. Yeah. No. Thank you. And I'm not seeing any other questions or comments from board members. No. All right. Uh, David, I believe you're off the hook. Before my, uh, I just want to say eight thirty-five. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Go to bed early. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. I'd say we never did any favors. Right. <laughs> All right. So that brings us into new business. Um, we have a few of our board policies, it looks like. So Superintendent Goff. Yeah. And as we jump into board policies, my um, I am so sorry. I was ahead of myself. So though we have already discussed um, most of J, you will not see the first half of J until your next meeting. So um but don't worry, you won't have to, to do it all in one sitting. So <laughs> you will have all of that done before June 30th. Um, all right. So what you have before you all speak to the first one is the uh, board policy CBA, which is the qualifications and duties of the superintendent. You can see that um, in the new policy, um, it is almost all new. So this is simply being updated because this is the recommended language from OSBA and we're trying to keep current with what OSBA is recommending. Mm -hmm. I noticed they added quite a bit, which is, it was really thorough. It was very good to see. Yeah. yeah. I think we've been long overdue with updating some of these policies, yeah. which is very apparent. <laughs> Certainly. So Certainly. thank yeah. you. Were there any questions on this one so far? Nothing. Just a note, it's been eight years since you adopted yeah. an update to that policy, so. And none of us did that because none of us were here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Okay. Um, the next policy is animals in district facilities. I think, is that mine? That's oh, that's still mine. All right, so animals in district facilities, if you'll recall, board members, um, mm -hmm. this came up because we had a complaint regarding our lack of adherence to our board policy and um, our existing board policy. And so this is a copy of what that policy looks like currently, um, which states that animals are generally prohibited on district policy. I think you had asked for us to take a look at that together. Um, and then for you to also have some examples from other um, neighboring districts and the sample from Oregon School Boards Association. You can see in the sample from Oregon School Boards Association that the language um, is similar to ours in that only service animals serving persons with a disability and animals approved by the superintendent or HR director or fill in the blank that are a part of an approved district curriculum. And we that's the same language we have are allowed in district facilities. Um, you'll also see though that we have included for you a copy of Corvallis's and Springfield's um, service animal examples. And you can see that Corvallis uses the language almost verbatim, um, same at, uh, verbatim to the Oregon oh, School Boards Association. Mm -hmm. And then Springfield's, when you open that, uh, very similar as well. So um, we recognize that you will wanna come back to those in old business, thought we'd give you some time to take a look at those. And if in the interim, you would like us to um, look at additional district uh, policies on that, we're happy to do so. How close is the policy to the, our current policy to the OSBA one? Is it pretty comparable? Because I see like, it looks like Corvallis pretty much is verbatim to the. Yeah, it's it's pretty comparable. It's um, some of the language used is a little bit different just because ours is dated. It's about 11 years old. So Will we be changing to be more consistent with um, OSBA's I would recommend that, that you move to the OSBA okay. policy. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, is that something you guys will put together then for the old business update? Will we just will. be the current recommendation? We will. Okay. We will. Yeah. Great. Unless you re unless you request another view of a of a policy that looks more permissive, but these policies all um, stand in the light of 
of uh, not having uh, basically animals in the districts district facilities unless they are specifically okay. animals serving uh, people with disabilities. Does, do any of the board members have any issue with them moving forward with the OSBA language? No, I think no? that's appropriate. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. And then I think we have one more policy mm -hmm. um, and that's public complaint KL. Again, the first and the third policies that are before you today came as part of the, the OSBA updates as either required or highly recommended, and this falls in the same. And you'll find in the updates of KL, the language that is in red is the updated language. A lot of it is just adding a reference to another place that the policy may also be found within our board policies, so it's not any sub substantive changes aside from mentioning bias incidents or displays of hate and sexual conduct with a student. Okay. Any questions, comments? Okay. Thank you. Mm. All right, that moves us into um, authorizing the resolution for sale of the Marion Street property. Uh, good evening again, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, this is new business coming before you tonight, um, and the memorandum that's in your packet, if you'll notice, it has the same structure as the memorandum that I brought to you last time. That's my plan is to kind of bring that same thing forward each time with updates every time we hit one of these major steps that we get ready to take. Um, so the loan, obviously, that's the piece that we just finished up tonight. The next piece to focus on then is the sale of the Marion Street property. I have laid out in the memo there, it's a revision of what I showed you in the draft last time with a little bit more detail. Um, the And then behind the memo, you'll see there is a resolution that we'll bring back to you as old business next time uh, and ask the board to vote on that essentially empowers me to advertise the property and collect I mean, back. I'm, excuse me. We'll declare the property as surplus. Allow us to advertise it and collect offers from the public on it, and then we will bring those offers back to the board for selection. And then the board would authorize a second resolution that would be that specific sale based off of the offer that the board chose to accept from that. Um, so that is the basic layout. The timeline for it is included in the memo. So you'll notice there's a first reading tonight. The idea is we would ask the board to take action at the next board meeting. Then we would immediately post the property. We're working with council on the appropriate way to get this out in front of the public. We believe we can do a flat fee MLS listing um, that will get that out there very broadly, very quickly. Um, and then uh, collect the offers, close them, bring them back to the board for consideration uh, with the goal of ultimately closing on the property somewhere around September 17th. Um, we've had a couple of um, organizations express interest in the property already, um, and we have completed a, a comparative market analysis uh, through council that puts, places the property at about six hundred seventy-five to seven hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, in this day and age, that's you know that is their current estimate on it. It could be higher, it could be lower. A lot of it's going to be driven based off of the level of interest, broadly speaking, in the property. Um, and then the construction excise tax still remains that piece at the end. I'm sorry, the sale of the bus garage would be the next major step. And then the uh, construction excise tax kind of balancing the books as the project closes out. I think June 7th is the next. Um, <clears throat> we were going to have a meeting on June 14th. I believe that's been changed in June. I, I did I did leave myself a little, little bit of wiggle room in there and said dates estimated, so yes. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. It, man, I'm sure. uh -huh. Just in terms of timeline, if like if you were to get an offer, could you wait two weeks for a board meeting to for the board to approve it, or would you need an emergency board meeting to, to do that? I believe the way this is structured, we'll be able to follow this sequence of events. Um, part of it being, you know, we already have at least one person who's expressed and has put a number down on a piece of paper. Um, but I don't think it would, I think it would be premature to say, let's take this offer without having put it out in front of the public and given everybody an opportunity to put an offer on the table. So I would recommend sticking to this timeline. Okay. Great. And just a reminder, because of the timeline, um, you will have three new board members. So um, maybe just plan for a review of the process at some point um, to go over with the new board as they come in, because it looks like they will be the ones deciding um, 
or looking at the offer when it comes yeah. forward. So it might help them to have a background um, plan at that point too. Yeah. Looks good. Any questions? So we will see this back. All right. Uh, on to our nutrition services contract extension. So the next item up in the board package is, um, you know, we've circled back to the food service extension a few times in the board, and I, I think we've all kind of settled that this is the way to move forward. Um, the This package is the process that we actually use to inform ODE that that is our intent. Um, and so we've laid this out. Um, the basic contract term, Sodexo has highlighted the fact that the CPI used for their prices has increased by 3.7%, um, but they are recommending a price increase on the meals of only a nickel, which is 2.5%. Um, we've, I think in conversations with the board, we've discussed the fact that our monitoring of our food service contract definitely also needs some improvement, um, and I'm building the plan to get that done now, um, and we will certainly include that next year going forward. Um, and so those two pieces coming together, we will um, send this package over to ODE after the board approves it in order to extend for the remaining year and start prepping the RFP to go out for the following uh, service. Um, based on this, I wasn't sure which way the board would want to go, so I kind of left an option in there whether the board chose to vote tonight or if they wanted to bring it back with questions um, as old business next time. Either one is supportable. So I know we're, we're extending the contract for a one-year extension while they do some evaluating, and we had already talked about that in prior meetings. Um, I'm okay moving forward with a motion tonight if that's what we want to do, so um, we can open the floor for a motion. Yeah, I move to approve the Sodexo contract extension as presented by staff. So we have a motion on the table to approve the Sodexo contract extension as presented by staff. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, it passes unanimously. And that brings us to bus financing. Uh, again, uh, good evening. The um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they just stacked me up at the end of the agenda. Right? <laughs> 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 um, so this is uh, circling back now to the bus purchase that the board approved back in January. Um, staff has gone out and received recommendations or financing offers. And what we have brought to you is the best offer that is available to us for the bus financing. It is with the same company that we used last year, which is Municipal Asset Management. Um, and in the, the evaluation of the quotes, it was a pretty straightforward best rate kind of thing. There wasn't a lot of nuance in it. Um, and so the recommendation to the board is to approve us in into a financing agreement with uh, municipal asset management. Remind me again how many um, buses that was for? Four buses. Four, right. Okay, thank you. Okay, were there any questions or comments about the information for the buses? Okay, we'll entertain a motion here as well. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to enter into a financing agreement with municipal asset management and the amount of $528,085. So we have a motion on the table to enter into a financing agreement with municipal asset management in the amount of $528,085. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that also passes unanimously. Thank you. Man, you're on a roll tonight, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Um, we have no other business on the agenda. Um, that takes us to our dates of interest to the school board. We have a uh, pre-planning meeting on Friday the 21st uh, with Director Roach, 8 a.m. and myself. Uh, and then um, we do have a, a budget hearing and regular board member meeting on the 7th. We have three graduations, June 8th, 10th, and uh, 14th, um, with more details to come, I am assuming. And then we have a special board meeting scheduled on the 21st and a work session scheduled with OSBA on the 23rd. And then our last um, regular board meeting for this board on June 28th. We will add an executive session um, sometime within the next week or so. And other than that, Oh, point of personal privilege yes. that I should have done during board reports. Yes. I just want to encourage people to vote. It's too late <laughs> to mail in ballots, but you can turn them into drop boxes or the county courthouses. Please vote. Definitely. Yes. Thank you. Uh, 
And AJ, we will have you home way before 10. <laughs> Unless you choose to go skate around and do other things in the meantime. But, you know. Uh, okay. With that said, we are adjourned, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. There is no rhyme, no reason.